I'd like to call this regular Board of Ed meeting to order at 7 p.m. Invocation or moment of silence, Scott Ryder. Uh, I choose invocation. Um, I want to thank all of our staff, our teachers, nurses, counselors, social workers, cafeteria aides, paraprofessionals, um, our classroom teachers, most importantly, our students who saw their way through another school year with a little bit to go, but we're very close. And the culmination of another school year means that next Wednesday, uh, most if not all of us, and everybody's welcome to join us online, and our graduating class families are welcome to join us on the field for graduation. I also want to congratulate anybody that's moving up from pre-K to kindergarten, second grade into their intermediate schools, fifth graders moving on to middle school, middle schoolers somehow moving on to high school, <laughs> like my daughter. I don't mean that in an academic sense, but an emotional sense for a dad. I just want to thank everybody from Superintendent Dresdick's office on down to our youngest learners in Enfield for the most normal school year we've had in three in the last three school years. And although not all of this pandemic has subsided, and I can attest for that as I was the parent of an email this morning saying that your daughter may have been a close contact, et cetera. I do hope that the next upcoming school year for 2022 to 2023 is as exciting and as uninterrupted as we all were used to back in the good old days. So thank you to everybody that had a hand in everything that we've done here in Enfield Public Schools. Over the last 10 months, let's finish strong. And let's have a great and safe summer. I've been somehow coincidentally honored, alphabetically speaking, to speak at the final meetings before graduation for a couple of years now. And once again, it's an honor. So thank you to everybody. Again, have a safe summer. Good luck to all of our graduates, as well as ascending students on to next year. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Fire evacuation announcement. Out the double doors in the back to the grass out the double doors to my left, your right, down the stairs, and out to the parking lot. Roll call, please. Mr. Ryder. Here. Mr. Ungeyer. Here. Dr. Kalman. Here. Mrs. Cushman. Here. Mr. Hamry. Here. Mrs. Acree. Here. Mr. LeBlanc. Here. Mrs. Pickett. Here. Madam Chair. Here. Item six, board guests. Everybody is really busy, so no, we do not have any guests this evening. Item seven, superintendent's report. I mean, I'll be glad to know this will probably be my quickest one. I can echo what Mr. Ryder said, and for all of our staff members who are watching, um, this being the last meeting before the last day of school, um, we're beyond halfway there, but we are at the final countdown. They'll know what that means. People at home may not. Um, but I want to echo what Mr. Ryder said. This has probably been the most challenging year of all of our professional careers. Um, and hopefully it didn't show for our students that got through this year with a little bit more sense of whatever normal is. And that's a testament to the, the hardworking women and men of the Enfield Public Schools. Um, everyone from Mr. Ryder mentioned everybody, so I won't repeat it, but anyone who is employed or volunteers or assists, and that includes the nine of you, to help get us through probably the most challenging year we've ever had in this industry to be, ever. So I just want to thank everyone for hanging in there, um, even when we thought it was over and you get a phone call that your school is closed or we're grabbing kids to cover classes with teachers and staff members not being able to attend. Um, this was something that you can't train for. Um, but at the end of the day, when we're walking through schools and we had the pleasure of 
I won't announce it, although it's been made on social media about our new teacher of the year, seeing the reaction when we surprised our new teacher of the year um, and having the, her second grade class just run up and bombard her and almost tackle her out of joy, that's a sheer reminder of we're doing the right thing. So thank you, everybody who's watching. As I said, uh, next it's not the last day of school for everyone, and I'm not going to list all the schools. So everyone but Barnard, your last day of school is Thursday, June 23rd. Unfortunately, Barnard's last day is Friday, June 24th. And as Mr. Ryder mentioned, we're all looking forward to next Wednesday celebration outside at Enfield High School uh, for the commencement ceremony. I have not and will not look at the weather until Sunday, the earliest, if not Monday. So nobody ask. Uh, right now, we're banking on it being on Wednesday, uh, and that's the way we're going to stick with it. So that concludes the superintendent's report. Oh, one last reminder: it is an early release day for stu uh, early release week for students um, next week. Starting on Monday, there will be early release with lunch for everyone, with the exception of Friday is an early release for our friends at Henry Barnard. That would be an early release without lunch. Um, yes, staff members, the last two days of school, you get, just like every other year, you can leave with the kids. Unfortunately, you've got to stay the first few days of the week because you guys got to pack all your stuff out of the cafeterias and get them to your rooms because we're using cafeterias next year. So I hope that answers a lot of the questions I've been getting over the last 24 hours. But that will conclude the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Drezek. Anyone wishing to sign up to speak before the board can use the sign-up sheet over there. Just as a reminder, um, when you come up and address the board, we cannot uh, respond back to you. Um, a board member can respond back to you if they choose to do so through their board member comments. We ask that you refrain from personalities. We cannot comment on uh, student matters or personnel matters. Um, tonight, we don't have a lot of speakers, so we will um, allow four minutes. Our first, uh, Jessica Sewell. Oh, and when you come up, you have to give your name and address. Thank you. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> My name is Jessica Soul, and I live at 10 Brook Road here in Enfield. When Columbine happened in April of 1999, I was a few months away from beginning my student teaching. I have heard talk of gun control and reform back then, and I still hear it today 23 years later. I call my representatives and my senators, but I need to focus on what I can change, and that is my own classroom and in my own school. Every teacher that you know has created a plan for an active shooter in their building. Every teacher you know has walked on the outside of their building to look into their classroom to see how much of their room can be seen from the windows. Every teacher you know has wondered how fast they can lock their door with shaking hands. Every teacher you know has had a conversation with their students about the spread out method versus the group together method of hiding. Every teacher you know has jumped at least once in their career at the sound of a fire alarm, a dropped textbook, a slammed door, or a scream from outside. Every teacher you know has hoped and prayed that they could be in the way long enough to save their students' lives. Every teacher you know keeps their phone on their person to call 911 in the event of an emergency. Every teacher considers how hard it will be to keep 20 frightened children quiet long enough. Every teacher you know has had another day after conversation with nervous students returning to school with many questions. Every teacher you know. In my hand, I have a copy of an advertisement from the Sandy Hook Promise. The top of this statement says, never again with the date December 14th, 2020, 2012, excuse me. There are 30 school shootings listed on this page. This does not include shootings at movie theaters, grocery stores, malls, and other places of business. This is only at schools. After the shooting in 2018 in Parkland, Florida, my colleagues and I asked for a meeting with the former head of security here at Enfield Public Schools. We th asked then for the following five changes to be made to our building to provide more safety and security for our students. None 
of these actions or changes had been, have been made in the 1,581 days since Parkland. We were told that financially we were asking for too much at once. These are the five statements, five questions that we had. Number one, we want classroom doors that lock from the inside. Why are we expected to put ourselves out in the hallway into possibly the direct line of fire to secure our classrooms? We would like mirrored one-way film on the windows and doors, especially in classrooms, hallways, and entry points to keep people from seeing into our buildings. We would like classroom evacuation windows that open far enough to safely get students out. My windows in my classroom open to an approximate 45 degree angle at a maximum width of nine inches. That is this big. I don't know any of my students that I could get out in this space, if necessary. We would like concrete blockades at the front of our building to prevent anyone from using a vehicle to gain entry to the building. We would also like to see a two-door entry system, such as the ones that we have at Enfield High School, JFK, and Alcorn. Again, none of these changes have yet been implemented. I have read multiple news articles, emails, and press releases about safety measures implemented in our district since I began working here in the fall of 2016. I ask this board, Mr. Dresick and Mr. Longy, to please consider that what has been done thus far is simply not enough. If you want to know how to make our buildings safer, come talk to us, ask us. Please don't dismiss us again. Please listen to us. If I wanted to be armed as a teacher, if I, excuse me, if I wanted to be armed at my job, I would have joined the military or followed in my parents' footsteps in law enforcement. I am not here to ask this board for tougher gun laws or stricter background checks. I simply want my school building to be better protected. Thank you. I'm not sure I'm going to say your, your, yeah, your last name right, but you can correct me. Is it Luca Basile? Yes. Oh, perfect. So you just have to make sure that red light is on, and we just need your name and your address. All right. Sounds good. Hi, my name is uh, Luca Basile. I am 15 years old, and I live at in Enfield on 28 Union Street Extension. And I am a freshman this year at Enfield High and will be a sophomore next year and I was going to suggest a no midterm or exam if you have an A minus or higher in the class through let's say the first two quarters you have an A minus and you have an A minus in the class and then you would not be able you would not you have the option not to take the midterm and then for the finals if you have an A minus in the class or higher, you would not have to take the um, exam. And our neighbors, Suffield and Summers, I know do that for a fact that I have friends there and they all really like it, like they all like the idea. And I was just here to suggest a new idea and something I thought would be beneficial for like, and kind of like a little incentive for people to have higher grades and just to have less stress. So. Thank you for your time. My name is Luca Basile, and have a nice rest of your day. Thank you, Mr. Basile. I know you haven't been here to speak, so um, we're going to be moving on to board member comments if nobody else wants to speak. And again, the board members can address that during their board member comments. So is there anyone else wishing to address the board at this time? There's someone walking. Just came from track. Oh. Um, yeah. Sorry. I think you need to sign in, Miss Davis. I have the sheet, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'll write, I'll write it down. You got it? Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Am I good? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Davis, and I reside at 201 North Maple Street. First of all, we're coming up to the end of the school year, and um, 
I'm going to send my appreciation out to all our amazing teachers, staff, bus drivers, superintendent, all the central office, because of all your guys' hard work, dedication to our children is why we have a successful school year. Sorry, I'm a little out of breath. I also notice the agenda we have, the evaluation of our amazing superintendent. I just wanted to remind everybody, we had a major pandemic, people dying all over the place. He kept our schools going. All our children are still here. Our teachers are here, our staff's here because of that man sitting right there. No matter how much he, he took, he kept doing what science said and he put our children's lives in front of politics. I thank him and I want everybody to remember that. So also on another note, I wanted to bring up, because I've been doing a lot of documentaries and wondering why people want to keep eliminating our education and, and whitewashing it or whatever you want to call it, and bringing a lot of Christianity into our schools. And there's a documentary out there that I, was, I ended up watching, and I did put it on social media. But since we're heading to summer, it's like a summer read, and we'll, I challenge everybody to start watching some documentaries. So this one here is Keep Sweet. So remember that. It's a Netflix documentary, Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey. I highly recommend you watch it. It's a real eye-opener of the Christianity faith that ends up in cults. Now, with the second FOI and even the first FOI request, we have a lot of the same stuff coming from the same group that comes here, all from that faith. And I'm not saying every faith's bad because faith is great, and to believe in something's great. I believe the cults are bad, and I believe we have people that are surrounding themselves in a cult and being controlled. These FOI show like 10 of them, and they all send the same exact email, word for word. And when you watch the documentaries, you learn. That's how they slowly control everybody, little by little. And then wiping out the education and sex ed, who they don't want that taught at all. Why? Because they want our kids married, our daughters at 14 years old, and giving birth to children. Watch this documentary. It's disgusting. It's heart-wrenching. And I believe we have a cult here in our town. So I want everybody to watch the documentary. Please watch your children around these people, because I don't really trust them. Because why are you trying to take things out of our education? Everybody should want our children to learn everything. So when someone tries to touch them or hurt them, our children should know to say no, to go to someone they love, to know it's wrong. So that's my challenge to everybody. Let's educate ourselves a little bit more. And if anything, let's start adding these documentary to our school curriculum. Since we have a committee forming for all this stuff of input and all this, let's add more education in, right? Let's not remove anything. Let's add it, because that's what we do. We lead by example. Thank you all for everything you do. And the ones that are for every child every day, God bless you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the board? Okay. Public, I should say audiences are closed. We're going to start with board member comments. We'll go alphabetical order tonight. So that would be you, Ms. Sakree. Good evening, everyone. At the last Board of Ed meeting, I didn't get a chance to congratulate the great musicians or the future musicians at Prudence Crandall. I had the pleasure of attending the Prudence Crandall's spring concert on May 23rd. The chorus sounded wonderful under the direction of Miss Clark, and the instrumentalists at that school were wonderful as well under the direction of Mr. Spaldi. So it was a great concert. The children were very good, lots of talent. I'm looking forward to seeing them again next year. Kudos to the music specialists, uh, Ms. Clark and Mr. Spaldi at Crandall. Um, I also have some Crandall highlights that were sent to me by, by Mr. Sills that he would like for me to report. Third grade at Crandall participated last week in the history of Enfield tours and the three branches of government in-house field trip. So last week, the third graders got to visit the Wallop Schoolhouse and the Old Town Hall Museum to reinforce their learning about the history of Connecticut 
and infield from social studies. Students got to connect their experiences as a student now, in 2022, to those students who attended school in a one-room schoolhouse and see artifacts from the Bigelow Sanford carpet mill and Hazard Gun Bout. Gu sorry, Hazard Gunpowder Company. Last week, the third grade also got to participate in the three branches of government program, and it was awesome. Students got to learn about the state's branches of government, elect a peer governor and a lieutenant governor based on their platforms, and participate in a mock trial. Thank you to the Connecticut Historical Society for putting this on for us and the PTO for making this free for the third graders. Andrew DePere was announced as the new principal at Crandall School, which will be effective July 1st, 2022. Amy Dennis, who's the assistant principal now, was announced as the grades three through five special education coordinator, effective July 1st of 2022. Elizabeth, um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Elizabeth Suzik, she's Enfield's Poet Laureate, is scheduled to visit with students in grades three, four, and five this week from June 14th till the 22nd. And the Crandall's fifth grade moving up ceremony will be held virtually on Tuesday, June 21st from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And I would like to say happy vacation to all the teachers, the staff, the students, and parents. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cree. Dr. Kalman? Kite ha held its uh, last collaborative meeting uh, of the school year on June 1st. A few highlights. Can you hear me with my? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a few highlights. Uh, all 28 slots for ECDC are full, which is a great accomplishment. ECDC is looking at an OEC grant for an app parents can use to monitor their children's developmental milestones. The app called Sparkler also offers stimulating activities that children can do with their parents. The app targets children from zero to five years of age. Uh, First Readers held its annual award ceremony last month at Asnuntuk Community College. More than 200 students from kindergarten to second grade received their awards. Uh, this was, like last year, a drive-through ceremony to ensure safety against COVID. This is uh, really such an incredibly uh, positive program. It's designed to promote learning at a critically important time in a child's life. And it's no flash in the pan. First Readers has been around now for many years, and I'm sure it will continue to serve the Enfield families for many years to come. 2Gen held uh, its last meeting uh, until uh, next fall. There was a discussion about where 2Gen should be heading in the years ahead. Until now, 2Gen has served primarily as a forum for stakeholders to share information and ideas that will help the Enfield ALICE population access resources to meet their basic needs. And again, ALICE stands for Assets Limited, Income Constrained, Employed. As this strategy served 2Gen well for a number of years, but the leadership felt it was now time to move on to a more proactive role and to work directly with businesses and community partners to address family needs. The leadership team is very hopeful that with the addition of the Enfield Chamber of Commerce to the 2Gen membership list, great strides will be made in involving the business sector of our community in 2Gen activities. A lot of uh, future activities were discussed at the last kite meeting, but in the interest of time, we can defer that discussion for a later date. With respect to Head Start, uh, the spring, uh, Head Start held its Spring Health Advisory Committee meeting last Thursday. The head of the health committee is nurse Jennifer Meyer. Uh, a number of health and nutrition issues were discussed, and I want to mention just a few bullets. Uh, first, the most common health problems encountered over the year were asthma and allergies. 
virtually 100% of children are up to date on their vaccinations. Uh, it is hoped that mobile dental services will be reestablished in the fall. They were discontinued at the beginning of the COVID epidemic. Head Start children continue to receive nutritious meals in line with recommendations of the USDA and the Child and Adult Care Food Program. The hope is that the dietitian will soon be able to return to Stowe to talk with the kids about healthy nutrition. This activity again was suspended as a result of COVID. BMIs continue to be monitored for every child entering, uh, excuse me, enrolled in Head Start. With respect to the preschool update, there is a record review of every child heading to kindergarten to ensure that all of them are up to date on their vaccinations. There has been no change uh, in the immunization schedule and moving forward, there will no longer be any religious exemptions with regard to immunizations. There will be a summer program held in July from 8.30 to 12.30. Meals will be provided with regard to WIC, 18 children are enrolled and telehealth services will continue through October. Families will be receiving farmer's market checks. Uh, with regard to the mental health program, Heather Benyek is the social worker in charge of this aspect of care. 18 children have been referred for mental health concerns and Head Start will be looking into the option of conducting trauma screening in the near future. Now with regard to COVID, masks continue to be required. Cohorting and appropriate sanitary measures continue to be practiced. All volunteers must be fully vaccinated and weekly PCR testing is offered to children whose parents consent. The annual Head Start assessment was held on June 3rd. Three areas uh, of interest were explored. Family support and engagement, education and disabilities, and health and wellness. The final report is pending. Uh, just a quick comment about the Eaglet Gazette, and that's the online publication for um, Head Start. It's a wonderful publication. It always carries useful health, safety, and nutrition information for parents. And last week, it posted information from DPH and OEC about how parents can cope with the current formula shortage. And it cautions against making homemade formulas or diluting commercial formulas. And I can tell you that is an extremely important issue, and I'm really glad that the Gazette picked up on it. Um, and I guess that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Dr. Kalman. Ms. Cushman? Like Prudence Crandall, um, Parkman's third graders have been busy with some history projects. Um, tomorrow, we're looking forward to taking a tour of the historic buildings that have been made with 3D models by the third grade students. So we're looking forward to going to that, Ms. Sakri and I. Um, and John and Amanda, since I actually got to go before you, I can ask you perhaps if you could give us an update um, on what might be happening with the stakeholder advisory committee. That would be helpful to know. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cushman. Mr. Hamry? <clears throat> Thank you. So um, it's been a, one heck of a year, and uh, first uh, term, uh, first year in this term for myself on the board. And I do want to take a moment to uh, thank those that are on the board, the administration, and everybody involved in the education and uh, guidance of our students. Uh, I would echo superintendent's comments uh, that this has been a year like none other. And I do tend to stay away from superlatives because there's a precedent that is established at this point that could always be outdone in the future. So I would cautiously agree that this has been the most outstanding year that SA, uh, academics uh, could ever uh, endure. Having said that, I want to celebrate those that have pulled through it, that have gone through this, that have made it this far and continue to push through, that they've done it all in absolutely unprecedented times in ways that required building the plane while flying it to make it all happen. So to everybody involved, congratulations on your accomplishments. 
no matter what your role in the process was. And for the students, regardless of what level you're achieving, congratulations because you've achieved it. I do sincerely believe that everybody in the schools these days, the students, are absolutely doing their level best to achieve their grades and they should celebrate their grades regardless of what they are. So um, having said that, uh, having worked with the uh, JFK PTO and being a liaison in uh, JFK, it's been a great year. I want to celebrate them for their accomplishments uh, with Dr. Berrios and the wonderful PTO over there, including uh, Beth and Janet and Leslie and Scott and everything that they've done to make the students uh, feel that they are the most important things in the world. Um, I also want to echo what uh, Ms. Cushman said that uh, the Parkman Historical Buildings Tour really does sound like an incredible thing. I plan on stopping by myself if uh, schedule allows to uh, to see what the third graders have accomplished to build a 3D walking tour of buildings in Enfield. I mean, that premise alone, that, that concept is just amazing at a third grade level. Uh, I want to send congratulations to the graduates of the adult education program. I, I wish them all the best, and I do offer my sincere apologies. I, through a schedule uh, misunderstanding of my, that I uh, am responsible for, I showed up 45 minutes late after it was over. I missed it all. I, I was able to talk to a couple of graduates and uh, pass along my congratulations to them in person. To the rest that I didn't get a, the chance to meet, again, congratulations and apologies. Um, congratulations to our Teacher of the Year. I'll leave it at that if we haven't talked about it more fully, but what an accomplishment. And again, to be inundated by uh, second graders, that's a visual that uh, will probably carry that teacher and her uh, counterparts for a very long time. To our speakers tonight, I don't want to overlook anything that was said tonight. Uh, messages are heard. I, I appreciate the uh, comments made and um, know that your, your uh, comments are, are uh, not falling on deaf ears. Um, and again, to this board, being the first year that I've been on the board, thank you very much. It's been one heck of a ride. I look forward to next year and everything coming down the pike. Congratulations to everybody graduating, those moving up, uh, as uh, Mr. Ryder mentioned during his invocation. And again, congratulations to everybody for being where you are, wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Hamry, Hamry, Mr. LeBlanc. Whatever the name is, it's all good. Uh, so for tonight, um, I just want to mention that the this is the last day for the summer instrumental music program that takes place in the summer. Um, it's a four week program through the month of July, um, and it runs from nine to five, or excuse me, nine to twelve every day, um, except for Fridays and of course on the fourth of July. Um, also like to um, comment on Luca's proposal. I would be in agreement with that. Um, I know at my high school, they um, that was, I can't remember if we did it for midterms or not, but there was definitely a, um, a grade, it was a B plus or A minus, somewhere along those lines where um, if you achieved that over that semester, you would not have to take the final. Um, and he brought up a couple other school districts in our area um, that have also done it. So I think it's a good good way to get students to be academically involved um, throughout the semester and gives them a little incentive to uh, want to do well throughout the, the uh, semesters, um, depending on what direction that goes. Um, last but not least, I'd like to congratulate. There were two um, Enfield Little League teams that made it to the um, championship uh, for their respective age divisions. Um, one of them uh, came away champion. Um, so congratulations to all those uh, athletes, student athletes, um, who uh, were able to achieve that. That's it. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Ms. Pickett? All right. Um, so I'm going to try to get through this without getting too emotional because it is the last uh, meeting before the end of the school year. Um, 
what a nice way to start my evening. I was out on the town green and field unplugged, had a rescheduled concert with Miss Renee Coro. Um, thanks to kite and Enfield public schools, I think supported some of that. Um, a lot of families were out there and on the playground and it was an amazing evening. Um, and I think for me, this school year is bittersweet in many ways. Um, it's my last year at Stowe as a parent, and I'm gonna say that as a parent because I think Stowe will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, that place, I think, is just a magical place um, where amazing things are happening, and um, thank you, Jackie Valley, and all the staff at Stowe for what you do every day. Um, and although I won't have a kiddo there next year, I promise to, to stay connected. Um, and I just wanna take a moment to thank Central Office, you, Mr. Dresick, Mr. Longy, um, Kathy, um, and all of the staff of MPL Public Schools, all the students, the families, and our community partners, because it takes all of us to make a successful school year happen. Um, and I and I hope that that just continues and every school year is better than the next. Um, so a couple of just quick updates. Along with uh, what Mr. Callanan said, I attended the first readers um, event with a first reader. Um, it was super exciting uh, seeing them like see their friends in the car and unbuckling and taking photos. Um, so even though things are different, um, they are still enjoyed and celebrated. Um, there was also Lego Day at the school. There was a purse bingo event for Enfield Street School um, and Field Day last Friday that I got the uh, chance to volunteer at and I think I had more fun than the children. But I wanna give a special shout out to Mr. O'Brien. I know he is retiring um, and he put on quite a heck of a field day. We had a blast um, and I just wanna thank him for those efforts. And there were high school students that were there volunteering. Um, and to see that, I think, Tina, you've spoken that about that a lot, about the mentor kind of mentorship of our students. Seeing the various grades come together um, and support each other in that way is just so, so heartwarming. Um, second grade promotion is happening on the 16th. Um, a couple of STOW updates. Uh, there was that Enfield High School track team did a little like STOW or younger kid kind of tracked me on the first. It was awesome. My kiddos had so much fun. Um, again, thank you to the students and the coaches that put that on. There is an end of the year family event happening um, on the 17th on Friday at Stowe. Make sure families that you've signed up for that um, and Stowe is aware that you're attending. ERFC, I encourage families to visit their website. They still have spots for their summer programming. Um, uh, teen programming, um, before and after school stuff, their summer meals, so lots that are happening um, that ERFC is providing, so please visit their website. Um, also wanted to share that Juneteenth, um, if you don't know that holiday, I suggest you look it up, um, is happening on June 19th on the town green here from 11 to 6, um, a great opportunity to engage in some cultural um, and historical history. And then um, to answer some of your question, Janet, regarding our committee, and John, please feel free to chime in um, during your comments. John and I have gone back and forth kind of a couple times now, sharing our ideas, putting them together. Um, a draft has been shared with leadership, so I think we're just waiting for kind of next steps as far as that process and where that goes. Um, I do have a couple questions for the superintendent, um, if I may, regarding iPads over the summer. Um, and I believe they're coming home. Um, that was the message I received. I'm just wondering about the expectations of kind of what kids should do with them over the summer. I know in newsletters, there's some nice one pagers on iReady. Will we be getting that magical clever badge that gets me to all of those awesome apps? Um, so just some clarification around expectations of iPads over the summer. I don't want to speak out of turn because <laughs> they'll kill me. Um, there is some, so we're in the process of an iPad refresh, um, which allows the opportunity to either take the existing iPads and repurpose them or allow certain students and age groups to keep them. <laughs> um, you can probably sense what area I'm leaning towards but I'm waiting for some final clarification on that and then the, the, your further question will be answered with, okay, if you get to keep them, this is what you can do with them. 
I'm dancing around this one because I had uh, he's going to kill me if I don't. So I, I, I can get I back to you. That's answer. probably where I should have started. I think that the reason for my question of that, Chris, is because I'm um, thinking of summer learning and all the opportunities for kiddos. If the iPads are going to be home with my little guy, kind of knowing as a family how and what we should be accessing, what's like, you know, I don't want to sit him on, you know, I ready for 45 minutes every day if they just need a little, you know, 15 minutes is good. Um, so just some family guidance would be helpful with whatever decision you make. There is some information already on our website with things that you can do from home. I know that that's in constant refresh, particularly if, if the decision is made to allow everyone to take them home forever. But um, uh, I, will, I will provide an update with the board when I get clearance without getting <laughs> No worries. Uh, no, no worries. And one, my other question, if you don't have the answer, you can just say no more questions, Amanda. Um, <laughs> summer school information. When will families be getting um, more concrete, logistical kind of information regarding summer programming? N no more questions, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're, it's coming. It's coming. Okay, perfect. It's, it, this week, everything's going out. It's being mailed this week. Yeah. Perfect. Thank I know, you. I don't know the <laughs> transportation stuff either. That's no worries. I was, no I was worries. actually look, honest. <laughs> all honesty, he can see. This is what I was actually looking up before you started to talk because I knew that one. Was <laughs> Sorry, you know, I'm in mom mode actually in the moment. I'm not in board member mode. I'm in mom mode. Like, what do I need to do? Um, the other thing that I just wanted to encourage families to do, um, I know it was in the ESS um, newsletter on Friday. There is a family survey that's out. Um, I encourage families to take. Take it. Um, I know I've given uh, Mr. Dresick some feedback on the survey, so I think it's a growth opportunity, but I still think families um, should be giving their feedback um, and sharing their experiences with school through that survey um, to help with some decision making for next year. So um, congratulations to all the graduating seniors. What an exciting time. Um, and thank you again to our staff. They always say it's like the end of the year is winding down, and I always say it's like winding up. Like I think things are more tense and probably more anxious than ever. So thank you all so much um, and excited for graduation. Thank you, Ms. Pickett. Mr. Ungeyer? Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> so uh, I'll start with uh, Hazardville Memorial. Um, Friday, June 10th, Hazardville Memorial had its field day. And uh, it was a wonderful time. It was uh, food and snacks and beverages and fellowship. Uh, parents of over 100 students were there and helped participate. So it was a wonderful time by all. And um, speaking of Hazardville, also um, alumni art students from Enfield High School um, came to Hazardville Memorial and worked with them to create a mural and this would be to highlight uh, growth, diversity, and inclusion. And um, that, made, that actually made the news. So um, these were uh, students, uh, art students, uh, at both Hazardville Memorial and uh, at Enfield High School worked together to produce this mural. And I also want to congratulate from Hazardville Memorial uh, Andrew Duper on his new position as a principal, Prudence Crandall. And um, as liaison to Hazardville Memorial, I came to know Andrew over the last uh, year, and I've really come to admire him and like him. And we, are, uh, we have a real asset in him, and I'm so pleased um, that he's going to be uh, the principal there. And I also want to thank uh, principal, or recognize principal, uh, Lisa Hunter for her support of Andrew. He's a, he's a good man, and we're fortunate to have him. Um, Ms. Ms. Soul, um, I, you know, I want to thank you for coming up and speaking. Um, I, I was enlightened. I didn't know, I didn't know those things that you had. I had a, you know what, like they say, you know, assumed, I assumed that there was higher level of protection being provided to the students than, than what than what you, um, what, what you uh, highlighted here tonight. Um, and I think it's important that we try to, within our, within our reasonable means, right, to protect our students as best we can. And the five things that you mentioned to me seem reasonable, okay? 
Now, you may know that the board of the board and the Enfield Public Schools do not control the facilities. We don't have control over the schools, and that comes through the town council. But it doesn't mean that we don't have an influence, okay? And um, so I think, I think this, we need to take a closer look at these five things that you mentioned and see what we can do to better protect our kids. So thank you for, for coming and bringing that to our attention. Um, golf, something on golf. So I just want to bring this to the attention of, of, of the board. Um, here in Enfield, we have a golf driving range. It's called the Pleasant View Golf Park on North Street. It's actually the only driving range in the whole region, okay? And it's utilized by the Enfield High School. It's a training facility, actually, for our Enfield High School golf golfers. And it was for, for the Fermi, when Fermi was here, too. It's been around for a long time, many years. Um, the lease on that facility, I understand, is coming up. And there is a um, solar farm that wants to use that facility to put a solar farm there. Um, in order for that to happen, it has to be approved by the Connecticut Siting Council. They have jurisdiction over the siting of new power facilities. But this, this, um, this golf facility has a recreational value to our community. And um, the board, not the board, but the town council recently um, recognized its value to our community, and they drafted a letter through the town manager to the um, to the Connecticut Siting Council, saying that uh, basically um, that this that this facility has a recreational value to Enfield, and so. If it has a recreational value, then the, it's within the jurisdiction of the siting council um, not to approve that facility as a as a uh, um, a solar farm. So um, I'd like to, I'm going to send you more information on this, but I'd like the board to consider we as a board drafting a letter, sending it off to the Connecticut uh, siting council, and uh, trying to. Uh, maintain that facility and have their lease renewed as a driving range, golf driving range, as a recreational facility. I'd hate to see it lost. There's nowhere else the kids can go to practice driving. It's a big part of uh, being successful at golf. And uh, it's, not just, it's not just the kids, it's the entire community that utilizes the, the facility. So I wanted to, uh, to mention that. And um, and then finally, I want a special congratulations to all of the Enfield High School seniors. Um, I can say this to you, that there is a great adventure ahead for you, regardless of what your plans are. And I know everybody's going in different directions. But I assure you that if you be good to yourself and you be good to others, that you will be very successful. So congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Ongeyer. Mr. Ryder? So a couple of things that are more global uh, than school specific. Um, there's also an Enfield Public Schools theater program being offered uh, July 5th through the 28th, Mondays through Thursdays, 9 to noon. And that takes place also at Enfield High in the auditorium. Um, I have children that have attended that theater program in the past. They all work together collaboratively for the month of July and then put on a 30 minute production at the end of that session on Thursday the 28th. Um, and it's a great chance for all the kids to get together and enjoy something else that we are very good at here in Enfield Public Schools and that's theater and arts. Um, also, the governor's summer reading list is out. Um, many principals um, have talked to this in their most recent um, teacher weekly emails. 
uh, that are all shared on EnfieldPTO.com. So check your school's page for the governor's summer reading list and what the kids can do, what paperwork they need to fill out to get credit for that. And that's a great program that's going on in conjunction with obviously the, the governor, but as well as Enfield Public Schools and the and Enfield Library. Um, so to make everybody aware of that. I also wanted to mention the family survey. Um, there's links to that on Enfield PTO as well. And, and when I say that, I mean, you know, the Facebook, the Instagram, the Twitter, and, and the dot coms all have links to our survey. And everybody's feedback is important, crucial, and encouraged. Um, as far as Eli Whitney specifically, uh, this week on the 15th is Unity Day, Unity Day slash Field Day, uh, which is tomorrow. Also on June 20th, which is next Monday, is their year-end celebration. They are obviously celebrating our fifth graders who will be moving up to the middle school next year. And also as a reminder to this board, uh, those who have been here for a long time and those that are new, it is our fifth grade class next year that will be the first body of students at JFK construction free. So I also wanted to thank the JFK Building Committee as well as all the residents of Enfield whose efforts made that happen. We are gonna have a middle school on par with our high school as far as a new facility with educational opportunities within it that not all of our schools will have, not all of the schools in our state, but we have two beautiful brand new educational facilities in town and that should be celebrated. And I can't wait till we all get a chance to go and see the ribbon cutting ceremony for that. Um, so to all of our fifth graders and all who come after them, please treat that building well, enjoy it. Um, to eighth graders, like my daughter, thank you because you lived through that construction your entire middle school career. You were uh, told not to go into certain wings, uh, but then you also got to enjoy other wings as they opened to you. Um, so thank you to all of our eighth graders, as well as our current sixth and seventh graders who also had to live through that construction, as well as our current ninth and 10th graders. That's a huge chunk of our educational community, our students that, that may have been disrupted slightly, may have had to you know, learn in a temporary room, but they all enjoyed it and they all got a kick out of seeing the new building go up around them. And I wanna thank everybody that had a hand in that as well. Um, so June 20th, again, fifth grade celebration at Eli Whitney, 11 to one. Uh, there's an opportunity to get some of the sillies out with some music and playground play. Uh, they'll be serving uh, pizza and ice cream. And then the fifth graders will be getting their yearbooks and they'll get a chance to have their classmates uh, sign their yearbooks. So I'm thankful to the Eli Whitney PTO, um, another organization that I've been a part of for six years. And I want to thank Janet Plua, um, who was my Eli Whitney PTO president. Um, I served proudly as the vice uh, there for six years as my two students, three years apart, went through Eli Whitney. Um, so thank you all for that as well. I also wanted to thank a good friend of mine who made this shirt for me, which came from my website. This is amazing. So to T. LeBlanc, I say thank you. I don't want to say where it was from, um, but I appreciate it. And I'll wear it proudly because I do enjoy doing that for our families. Um, and again, having one spot where you can find everything you need, uh, whether it's links to the admin's most recent principal's newsletter, to calendars that are updated. Um, I had a few parents reach out uh, recently through social media that were a little confused thinking we were done this week because they still had that calendar posted from last February on the fridge. Um, so again, uh, and I went through this when I was a, a first time kindergarten dad several years ago here in Enfield. Um, every canceled day, whether that be for weather or, or any other reason, that does add a day to the end of the school year, which is why we're going through next Thursday. Um, and don't tell my fifth grade son that because he was very upset that we're not done this week um, 
or don't remind them of that. But yeah, any day that we have to cancel for whatever reason, we do tack that on um, to June. So when the kids get excited about playing in the snow and it doesn't happen, you know, I, I always say I'd rather go today and come home early than uh, burn a swimming day in June. So I'd rather play in the pool than in the snow. But uh, thank you again to everybody who helped make this year possible. Um, thank you to this board. Um, and everybody have a safe summer. Um, again, this Sunday here on the Town Green is the Juneteenth celebration. Uh, Saturday, there's a Pride event at the mall. Uh, I was here also on June 1st when we raised the Pride flag here at uh, the Town Hall. Um, so that that's a testament to our town and, and, and its growth and, um, and being inclusive to everybody. So it's not black or white, gay or straight, it's everybody. So thank you to the town of Enfield and to the residents. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Okay, I have a couple of housekeeping items I'm gonna address first. Um, I attended the ERFC Toast of the Town event um, a couple Fridays ago. It was well attended and I hope that, um, that it was fundraise well so that the kids can get their backpacks and have opportunities to go to summer camp. Um, ERFC is a wonderful program and we're honored to have it here in school with us. Um, I also attended the adult ed graduation with Ms. Cushman and Dr. Kalman. Um, it was a wonderful celebration and um, it's a testament to those kids who have worked extremely hard to get to where they want to go and can have that celebration at adult education. Um, one of the things we stressed is it's not always, there's not always one path and the paths can be broken. Um, and the path you're on is usually the path you're meant to be on. So it was, it was a great accompl accomplishment for that. Um, things are winding down at Enfield High. Um, the seniors had their class night on Friday night. They said it was a wonderful time. It was actually at Twin Hills Country Club. They had a blast. They got their yearbooks. Um, a note to Mr. Petrucci, Petrucci, the yearbooks were great. Even uh, Dr., uh, Mr. Hamry said it. The yearbooks were, were awesome this year. Um, it was great. Um, the other thing I want to add is a congratulation to Miss Venustos. That's how you say it. I, I know. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, Congratulations to you on being Teacher of the Year. I saw the photos of the kids surrounding you, and that is quite an, an accomplishment for you. Um, I'm happy to hear from Mr. Ungai or Ms. Pickett um, that we're doing some mentoring and peer modeling. Um, like Amanda said, that is something I believe in strongly um, in the school with the um, older kids um, helping the younger kids, and I think it benefit, benefits both. Um, I have information on summer school. <laughs> um, for Enfield High specifically, um, Enfield High summer school registration will open on June 22nd. Um, an email went out from the guidance counselors. It's a four week session from July 5th to July 29th with no class on the July 4th. The times are 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for grades nine through 12. And it's free for all students, all Enfield High students. Um, and there's information on um, how to register and then register in person on Thursday, June 30th in the main lobby at Enfield High from 12 to 6. Um, and it talks about the courses that are offered. So if you need more information and you didn't receive it from the high school, make sure you email Enfield High and let them know that you need that information. Um, the other thing I want to mention is to Luca Basile. Um, I love when kids come to us and they Kids bring ideas about other kids and about the way they're learning. And I definitely think it's something that we should look into. Um, and, and his point, maybe it would be more of an incentive um, for kids to work harder to, with during the school year so that they won't have to take a midterm because um, some kids just get test anxiety. They could be well versed in the subject matter, but when they have to sit down and kind of go over a whole semester's worth, they, they can clam up and, and that can affect their grade in some way. Um, so um, through myself to Ms. Pickett, the curriculum chair, maybe that's something that we can put on the agenda and look into at the curriculum committee. Um, the other thing I would like to talk about is to Ms. Sewell. Um, I'm, I'm sure it was very hard to come today and talk about this um, in front of the Board of Education. Um, I think that every time um, there's a tragic, horrific event, um, it changes the teaching profession and it changes parents in some way. And we always want that change. And so many teachers will say, you know, I walk into the classroom the next day and I look around the room and um, I appreciate your candidness. I appreciate you 
giving us the ideas that you suggested. Um, we're a new board. Um, we're a new council. We can definitely look into that um, and see um, what we can do. Um, but I do appreciate it. As again, I know it was hard for you, and I'm sure there's many teachers behind you that are feeling the exact same way. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so I am going to end with a little thing that I knew I was going to have to start preparing in September. Should I still be sitting here again? Um, so I wrote something. It's not going to be long, but you're going to have to bear with me. Tonight is the last time I have the opportunity to sit up here as a Board of Ed member and a parent. I am proud to say I have been an Enfield Public School parent since my oldest went to H.P. Stowe in the fall of 2004. It was at H.P. Stowe that I found my love of volunteering at the school. My family spent seven years at H.B. Stowe with all three of my children attending. That journey came to an end and a new one began when the schools were reorganized. We then moved to Hazardville Memorial, Eli Whitney, JFK, and Enfield High. I will credit my decision to run for the Board of Education through my time at H.B. Stowe. I've said it once and I'll say it again. It takes a village and Enfield Public Schools was part of our, our village. Not every year was easy and some years and situations were hard. There were times frustrations due to my kids' standardized test scores, like not being able to take a foreign language at JFK, an issue with bullying, and a few more issues. When I think back over the 18 years, though, I don't remember those, those times first. I remember Miss Kilty helping us navigate the tier our daughter was on um, due to her TMC, CMT scores and realizing why she was testing so low. I remember Miss Snow and Miss Brooks encouraging all three of my kids with their struggle with their reading comprehension. Mrs. Belafronte, who was so helpful with at-home strategies for extra math help. I remember Ms. Tarbox, Ms. Puddick, and Ms. Zinzek, who answered all my relent relentless questions and kept an eye when I was certain my son was behind in learning. There are many other teachers who had a positive impact on my students' lives who we will forever be grateful for. And I asked my kids to remember all the teachers they've had. So I've been in the school district for 18 years. Every child of mine is a completely different child, but every child of mine had teachers that to this day they will still talk about and I've named them so bear with me Miss Bailing, Miss Page, Mr. Delaney, Miss Song, Mr. Nucio, Miss Nucio, Miss Guzzi, Mr. Cassio who always asks for my recipes, uh, Miss Goki, Miss Farrell, Miss Nadu, Miss Hurley, Mr. Wiley, Mr. Schultz who is an amazing AP bio teacher, uh, Mr. Gill, Ms. Bridges, Mr. Murray, Mr. Clark, Mr. Carlson, Coach Goucher, Coach Liver, Coach Beebe, Coach Lawrence, Mr. Mazone, Mrs. Mazone, Ms. Goddard, Ms. Simmons, Ms. Siniglio, Mr. Crane, Mr. Gorberino, Mr. Wanzer, Ms. Burlingame, who is one of the most patient teachers I know because she had my son for three years straight, um, <laughs> Ms. Berkey, and Mr. Coleman, and anybody I had missed. Um, the LeBlanc family appreciates all the teachers in the district, even if we didn't have you. Um, you make Enfield Public Schools an amazing place to be, and you really do make so much more of a difference in a family's lives than you could ever know. Um, and it's a testament when you are out at a store and somebody who had your child in third grade is like, hey, how's your how's your son? How's your daughter? You know, I know they're at this school. So um, it, it's a, a lifelong commitment that teachers make. And it's amazing to still live in a community where my kids go to school. So I'm signing off as a mom. It'll be official um, next Wednesday on June 22nd. I'm sure it'll be an emotional day, but I can't thank Enfield Public Schools enough. Thank you. Oh, and I want everybody to have a safe and enjoyable summer. Um, the students, the, the administration, and the families, um, all of Enfield Public Schools, please have a happy and safe and healthy summer. Thank you. Unfinished business, there is none. Item 11, new business, discussion and action regarding the 2022-23 healthy food certification. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is the annual vote where you have to vote yes to vote no. Um, so in your pocket, in your packet is a letter from Diane Edwards, our Nutrition Services Director, um, that the board has to certify whether there's a, they are a healthy food certification statement for the 2022-23 school year. Um, state requires all of us to complete the certification statement um, with certain items that won't be sold or, or would, would be sold to the students. The board has never, um, in my tenure that I can recall, um, have ever 
voted to certify that we would be, and it's not because we don't believe in healthy students, because there's also some financial ramifications that if we do, and there's certain things that we can't serve in the event. For instance, if you sign off on this, um, say goodbye to class celebrations. You can no longer have cupcakes in your classroom. It's the cupcake rule, I've, for those of you who've been here for quite some time. So this is an annual request. The information is in your packet, um, but it would require a roll call vote. And if your vote is, Kathy, correct me, you're voting yes to say no, that would be the motion. Okay, so do I make a motion to not accept it? <laughs> Yes. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion to not accept the 2022-2023 Healthy Food Certification. Do I have a motion? Second. Who made the first? First by Mr. Hamry, seconded by Ms. Dr. Kelnan? I, I, I seconded it, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion or questions? I know it sounds confusing. Okay, so we're gonna say no. You say yes. We say yes, okay. Yes, which ultimately means no. Yes to say no. Mr. Ryder? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ungeyer? Yes. Dr. Kalman? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Pickett? Yep. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Not. Or doesn't. <laughs> um, discussion and action, if any, regarding the June 28th, 2022 Board of Ed meeting? Yes, thanks, Madam Chair. Traditionally, um, the board has a meeting scheduled for the last week of June, but um, also traditionally, there's no one here. <laughs> um, I can tell you that there will, this day will be pretty. Um, I'll be pretty lonely. There's certain people I'm not allowing to come. Um, and the fact that we don't get out until Friday the 24th, um, there's a lot of our staff members that are required to take time before June 30th. So we'll be a little shorthanded. I don't have any items to bring you that day, but you do have the possibility of having a special meeting in the event there's something you have to vote on, but ultimately that's your decision to make. Okay, do I have a motion um, to cancel the June 28, 2022 Board of Ed meeting? So moved. So I, I have, excuse Moved me. by Dr. Callan. I move. Seconded by Ms. Cushman. Any discussion? Roll call. Yep. Mr. Ryder. I am for <laughs> canceling the June 28th meeting. I need a yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Ongeyer. Yes. Dr. Callan. Yes. Mrs. Cushman. Yes. Mr. Hamry. Yes. Mrs. Acree. Yes. Mr. LeBlanc? Yes. Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Item C will be addressing um, after item 16. Item 12, Board Committee Reports, Curriculum Committee. We are meeting tomorrow at 5, um, hoping to talk more about TAG. Um, and I will add as an item from the table talking about um, exam exemptions and what our process is for that currently. Thank you. Finance Committee? Our uh, talented and gifted investment continues to lose value. It's uh, now worth $3,104,537, which is a loss of $403,709 year to date. Uh, we continue to believe that this is a reflection of the general state of the economy. And hopefully once the economy starts to improve, so will the prospects for our investment. We plan on meeting with our investment company, Wolf Investments, in September. Thank you. Policy Committee? Uh, Policy Committee is meeting next week on the 21st at 5.30. Uh, the Leadership Committee, we have not met. Uh, Joint Facilities Committee? I don't have the date in front of me, but we are moving to monthly um, due to the fact that it's summer. Um, and I believe we're meeting in early July, but I, I can get that date and email it to the board just in case anybody wants to join. JFK Building Committee. Uh, I spoke to the JFK Building Committee in my board member comments. I just, again, want to thank them. The, the end is near on the construction. Uh, once the building is cleared out um, at the end of next week, um, they should be full steam ahead on the next 60 some odd days that they have to finish up the building while the 
kids are out of school and the I will be happy to <laughs> invite them here to give us a recap when this is over Perfect. so they can present it to the whole town. Um, and I also look forward to our invite to, to go see it ourselves. Okay. Joint Security Committee. Joint Security did meet last week. Uh, we're going to be meeting again around the start of the school year. Um, um, so I'll share that date with us in future meetings. Mr. Hammer? Yeah, sorry. And I do want to thank everybody on the uh, Joint uh, Security Committee for having this meeting. Uh, I was able to attend, and um, I will say that uh, the Texas incident happened a few days prior, and it did bring a, a, a heightened sense of urgency to having the meeting. And... Uh, I will say that I, I am thankful that we were able to, to uh, meet and I appreciate the ability to have the understanding of where our schools lie in, uh, in uh, preparations and responses and whatnot. So again, thank you. I look forward to the next one in that uh, this would be as a, a standing meeting happening on a regular basis. Uh, September 7th at 8.30. Okay, thank you. Joint Insurance Committee meeting. Um, Jean and I attended the meeting. Um, the Joint Insurance Committee was um, created to help with um, insurance, um, the self-insurance that we were going through, and it's running very smoothly at this point, and there's been some policies that have created. So the Joint Insurance Committee um, is something that is gonna be more of an ad hoc type meeting um, going forward. Um, when they will let us know with the town manager's office if there's a need, um, maybe annually regarding like budgetary concerns, but it's not something that we'll be meeting on regularly. The Enfield Mental Health Wellness Group work group. Uh, there have been uh... there have been no further meetings of the work group. However, I've been advised by Cindy Guerreri, the director of social services, that a report from our consultants, B. Wetland Smith Consulting. Uh, has been generated on the mental health challenges confronting uh, Enfield residents and the factors contributing to them. This report will form the basis of an application for a grant from SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Uh, Ms. Guerreri also will be working with the North Central District Health Department on a CDC planning uh, grant related to addressing social determinants of health. And the purpose of this grant will be to hire a consultant to work with our work group in developing strategies particularly related to the circumstances of our community. Thank you. Thank you. And Enfield Cultural Arts Commission, um, we are working with the town council to get that going. Um, for any additional committees, I didn't know, Ms. Pickett, I know you mentioned it in your board member comments, if you or Mr. Ongeyer would like to say a few words about um, where we stand on the parent. Um, what I said in my comments is fine. You're fine, okay. Um, item 13, approval of minutes. Regular Board of Ed meeting minutes May 10th through 2022. Do I have a motion to accept? Motion moved. Motion by Mr. Hamry. Second. Second by Ms. Pickett. Show of hands. <laughs> approval for special Board of Ed meeting minutes May 31st, 2022 for the administrative opening. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Ms. Pickett, seconded by Mr. Hamry. Show of hands, or if there's any discussion. Um, approval of minutes, special board of ed meeting minutes, May 31, 2022. So moved. Do I have, moved by Mr. Ryder, seconded by Ms. Acri, Acri. Show of hands. Item. Item 14, approval of counts of payroll. Dr. Kalman. Excuse me. Jeez, <clears throat> uh, I'm really embarrassed. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, the f so certification of expenditures. The Finance Committee met on June 13th, 2022 uh, to review financial statements for the month of May year to date and to examine various documents related to finances. Uh, our review concluded that there is nothing significant to report to the board. Uh, the motion, I move we accept the superintendent's certification as follows. 
I hereby certify that in the month of May, total expenditures amount to $6,993,819.20, broken down between payroll, totaling $4,738,161.34, excuse me, $4,738,161.34, and other accounts totaling uh, $2,255,657.86. All payments have been made in accordance with the approved budget and are properly accounted for within the books of accounts. Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. The certified Lorena Cisneros, business manager. Second. Second by Ms. Pickett. <coughs> Is it a show of hands? Why am I show of hands? Um, certification of grants and Head Start expenditures. Uh, the Finance Committee met on June 13th, 2022 to review financial statements for grants during the month of May year to date and to examine various documents related to finances. Our review concluded that there is nothing significant to report to the board. The motion, I move we accept the superintendent's certification as follows. I hereby certify that in the month of May, the total grant and Head Start expenditures amount to $1,854,944.97, broken down between payroll totaling $488,570.45, and other accounts totaling $1,366,374.52. All payments have been made in accordance with the approved budget and are properly accounted for within the book of accounts. Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. Certified Lorena Cisneros, business manager. Second. Second by Ms. Pickett. A show of hands. Item 15. So Enfield High graduation uh, will be this Wednesday or this up. Excuse me, my, I'm off the weeks. Don't rush Can, me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me restart. <laughs> Enfield High graduation will be Wednesday, June 22nd. It's a week from this Wednesday um, at 7 o'clock at the Enfield High uh, turf field. Thank you. Um, we have a need for executive session matters related to personnel superintendent's evaluation. Do I have, we will not be returning. Make a motion. Yep, motion to move into executive. So moved. First by Mr. Hamry, seconded by Mr. LeBlanc. Show of hands. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>